Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a Gravekeeper deck profile. So this is a really fun deck that basically locks your opponent's graveyard down, which is a super cool tactic that was originally introduced in the original Duel Monsters. This is one of the oldest archetypes in the entire history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, which is absolutely crazy. It's a really neat deck that is just gotten support after support over the years, and it's just a really cool deck. So without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad. Definitely check out the Patreon down below because we have some really cool rewards for you guys like getting your assigned card, getting your name description of every single video, or even getting to request a deck profile every single month that you are a patron. So let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Gravekeeper's Spiritualist. So Gravekeeper's Spiritualist is a really good card that during your main phase, if Necker Valley is on the field, you can fusion summon a spellcaster type fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters you control and other monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials, which is really good to be able to fusion summon out something like your Gravekeeper Supernaturalist, because Supernaturalist is an insanely good fusion monster. Then we play three copies of Gravekeeper's Commandant. Gravekeeper's Commandant basically says, hey, discard me and add Necro Valley from my, your deck to your hand, which is a really good effect. Something you will notice, I have no idea why. This card's not dark. Every other Necro Valley monster, or every other Necro Valley monster, every other Gravekeeper is a uh, dark monster, but this one's not. It's an Earth. Maybe it's because the rock's in the background. I don't know. Then we play three copies of Gravekeeper Spy. Gravekeeper Spy is something that I, I really like in this deck, because if you have Necro Valley on the field... He goes up to 2,500 defense, which is really big. And if it's flip face up, you could special summon a Gravekeeper monster from your deck with 1,500 or less attack, which could be your copy of your Gravekeeper Spiritualist. It could be a copy of your Gravekeeper's Headman, Recruiter, your uh, Descendant, even Shaman. Any of the, your Gravekeeper monsters can be special summoned just about off of your Gravekeeper Spy. So that's why I play this card at three, which is a really good card. Uh, then we play three copies of Gravekeeper's Headman. Gravekeeper's Headman is a really interesting Gravekeeper. It's one of the newer support cards that came out of Soul Fusion a little while back. But if this card is summoned, you get to target a level four lower grade or level four Gravekeeper monster in your graveyard and special summon it in attack position or face down defense position. And you can only use the effect of Gravekeeper's Headman once per turn, and it's unaffected by the effect of Necro Valley. We play two copies of Gravekeeper's Recruiter. Gravekeeper's Recruiter, to me, is just a two of in the deck now. Um, if it's uh, sent to the graveyard, you can add a Gravekeeper's Monster from with 1,500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. When it's sent from the field to the graveyard, it's a really good card, but I feel like two is plenty. One copy of Gravekeeper's Descendant. It's kind of like Hand of the Six Samurai. You get to tribute one other face of Gravekeeper monster you control to target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. So it's kind of like Hand of the Six Samurai a little bit. Even got that hand reaching up like, hey, I'm, I'm the hand, which is kind of cool, but it, it just works like that. One copy of Gravekeeper's Assailant. Now this card is kind of like a whatever Gravekeeper you feel like you need. I like Assailant. I really like Assailant. I love the artwork. I love that it was one of the first one that I ever pulled. I love Assailant. I think it's one of the best cards in the entire deck. You guys are going to think everybody has entitled their opinion with this deck, but I really feel like Assailant's good because we're exiting Link format. We're at a Link format, but what this card does is when you declare an attack while you have Necro Valley on the field, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls and change its battle position. Okay, That doesn't sound like it's a lot, but if you're staring down a monster that has 5,000 attack and zero defense, and you swing at it with this and change it to defense, you're doing something. You're getting rid of that monster. So this card helps solve problems, and your opponent doesn't expect it. So I play it as a one-of. I think she's really a good card. Um, I probably will continue to play her one. You could probably, if you don't want to play Assailant, you could take her out, play something else that you want to play, but I feel like one Assailant is a really good card. One copy of Shaman. Shaman is a super good card in this deck. Shaman's effect is that this card gains 200 defense for each Gravekeeper monster in your graveyard, and you can negate the effects of, um... Negate all monster effects that activate their effects in the graveyard, which is good. And then it also she also has the ability that when Necro Valley is on the field, your opponent cannot activate field spell cards, and also field spell cards cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. She gets really big because she gains the additional 500, so she goes up 2,000, 2,000 when you have the uh, Gravekeeper or Necro Valley on the field, and then she also gains an additional 200. So she can get quite big on the field, which is really helpful because you want to protect her on defense position so she doesn't get destroyed. 
Then we play a single copy of Gravekeeper's Oracle. Now, you guys are looking at this card and going, why are you playing Oracle? That card's kind of hard to summon. But you don't use it to summon. You use it to make your Gravekeeper Supernaturalist with the Spiritualist to make Supernaturalist really big because it revolves around the level of the monsters that you use. But if you do summon this card, it has some really interesting effects. That you can tribute three monsters or one gravekeeper monster to tribute summon this card, but not set it. And then when this card is tribute summoned, you can activate these effects and resolve them in sequence up to the number of gravekeeper monsters tribute to summon this card. This card gains attack and defense equal to or gains attack equal to the combined level of all monsters tributed to tribute summon this card on the field times a hundred. Destroy all set cards your opponent controls, or destroy all monsters your opponent currently control, or all monsters your opponent currently control lose two thousand attack, which is really really good. So. That's it for the monsters, guys. We don't play any hand traps. I don't feel like you need them in this deck. This deck already does enough, and I don't want to play them with a card that we play a little bit later called Royal Tribute. Um, I don't want to hold a bunch of monsters in my hand, which is why I pl don't play as many, because Royal Tribute's at three now. So that's it for the monsters. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of Double or Nothing. The Double or Nothing is super helpful in this deck because it helps you OTK your opponent because Double or Nothing just makes Utopia double 10,000 and really, really helps out. One copy of Terraforming, which searches out your copy of Necro Valley. One copy of Gravekeeper Steel. It lets you target two Gravekeeper monsters in your graveyard and add those cards to your hand, but this card cannot be negated by the effect of Necro Valley, which is really nice. Three copies of Royal Tribute. This card is bonkers now. Um, if you control Necro Valley, both players discard any monsters in their hand. Every single monster goes to the grave. That's nuts. Um, I'm going to activate this card and then send every card. If you're playing against Pendulums, they lose with this card. If you're playing against a monster heavy deck, they lose. Um, unless they can stall you out, which usually they're not going to be able to, because you're going to make Spiritualist and attack them directly, like, twice and win. Um, which is really fun to be able to do. And Royal Tree, you draw this in Necro Valley, and, uh, you have a monster to summon, and you're probably going to win. Especially if you go first turn, you get the knowledge of seeing their hand, because you get, you have to confirm that they have no monsters in their hand. Then we play a single copy of Hidden Temples of Necro Valley. Hidden Temples is really cool, because... If you have a Gravekeeper monster and Necro Valley on the field, neither player can special summon monsters except Gravekeeper monsters. Even if a Gravekeeper monster or Necro Valley is not on the field, you have to destroy this card, which kind of sucks, but it's still a good card. Um, then we play a three of in the deck, which is the Rota, which is Necro Valley Throne. Basically what this card does is it lets you add a Gravekeeper monster from your deck to your hand or normal summon a, an additional Gravekeeper during your turn, which is really cool. I really like that effect to get them out of your hand to activate Royal Tribute. Three copies of Necro Valley, the best card in the deck. Necro Valley is the whole reason we play this deck, but all Gravekeeper monsters gain 500 attack and defense, and then cards cannot be banished, and neither player can activate cards that move cards from the graveyard. Like, if they, beside themselves, like, if if you're banishing Breakthrough Skill, or if, not Breakthrough Skill, would be a one that you would use, I don't know, there's a card, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but something that banishes itself from the graveyard to activate an effect, you wouldn't it doesn't matter. It can do that. But it can't move... Another card can't move it from the graveyard. Then for the last three spells, we play three copies of Lure of Darkness to be able to draw, which is really cool because the majority of the deck, except for Gravekeeper Commandant, is dark. So that's it for the uh, spells. Let's get into the traps. So for the traps, we're playing two copies of the Necro Valley Temple. Necro Valley Temple is really interesting because... When a Gravekeeper monster and Necro Valley are both on the field, uh, monsters your opponent controls lose 500 attack and defense, and once per turn during your main phase, if you control no cards in your field spell zone, you can activate a Necro Valley from your hand or graveyard, and if this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can set a Necro Valley spell or trap directly from your deck. Which is really cool, or Spell or Trap directly from your deck, which is really cool because it helps you keep your Necro Valley on the field, or get it on the field as quickly as possible, which is super, super nice. Let me play two copies of the Imperial Tomb of Necro Valley. This card is really good in this deck, because basically what this card is, is Solemn Judgment, but for free. Um, which, when a Spell Trap or Monster Effect is activated, while both a Necro Valley, or while Gravekeeper Monster and Necro Valley are on the field, you can negate the activation of you destroy it, which is really, really nice. Then, for the last three traps, we play three copies of Solemn Judgment, because I wanted to play a little bit more of a control variant. Because if I, am, if I activate Royal Tribute, 
Okay, and on the first turn, and I make you this this deck is a for me a going first deck. Um, if I get forced to go second, I go double or nothing and try and OTK you. But if I go first, um, and I set Judgment Imperial Tomb, activate Necro Valley, and use Royal Tribute, um, GG, because I have two negates for whatever spells and traps you have left, um, and then I'm going to keep swinging at you until I win. So I want to go first to Necro Valley, or I want to go first in Grave Keepers, because it works. So that's it for the deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we're going to be going for two copies of Spiritualist. Spiritualist at two is just fine. You're only ever going to summon this twice, maybe. Once you summon it once, you're usually going to win. But it gains attack and defense equal to the combined original level of the materials it uses. That's why we use Oracle, because it's a level 10 plus a level 4, which is 14. So it gains all the way up to 1,400 extra attack. So it goes to 34 uh, plus the additional Necro Valley on the field. So it goes up to 39 on summon, which is really good. And it can be destroyed by our opponent's card effects as well, so that's going to really protect it. And it also has the ability that during your main any during your uh, main phase, you can activate this card effect. During your end phase of this turn, you get to add a Gravekeeper's Monster or Necro Valley card from your deck to your hand, which is really cool because it kind of scarms at the end phase to let you add. Then we play the Utopia Engine, which is Utopia, the Lightning, to be able to attack your opponent for 5,000. Utopia Prime to overlay under the Utopia, the Lightning, and a single Utopia because you go Utopia, Utopia Prime, Utopia Lightning, attack your opponent for 5,000, they can't activate anything. And then we play another Utopia and a copy of Utopia Double because you can overlay the Utopia Double, detach your material, and then you get to add Double or Nothing and then overlay Utopia on top of the Utopia Double and then attack your opponent for 5,000 and then negate the attack by detaching a material and then drop Double or Nothing and attack for 10,000. Then we play a Tornado Dragon. Tornado Dragon's really cool because it can pop spells or traps. One copy of Baguska. Baguska is really good because it just stalls your opponent if you do need to. Exiton Knight to blow board if you need to. It's very rare that you need to, but you kind of sometimes need to. Number 60 to double the attack of a monster. It's really funny to double Spiritualist sometimes because it goes all the way up to almost 8,000. Boral Sword because you can OTK your opponent. Rarely with this card, you don't usually put that many monsters on board. One copy of Unicorn, just to bounce stuff if you need to. Phoenix, to pop spells and traps. And a single copy of Wee Witch, because it's really funny to make Wee Witch with Spiritualist. Because if you make Wee Witch Spiritualist, he gains 500 more attack points, which is funny. So, that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a really fun deck to play around with. It's pretty budget, to be honest. The majority of the deck has been printed in, like, common. Um, I think the only card that's not is Recruiter. Which, if you don't want to play Recruiter, you could play Wise Man, I believe is the other one, which is this card. You could play this card instead. Um, if you want to go that route, if you want to go more of a budget variant of this deck. But, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below. Because we have some really cool rewards for you guys, like mentioned in the beginning of the video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys.